Good day. We're here with another of our continuing series of Cannon Falls history, uh, put together for the Cannon Falls History Museum and for Channel 12 filming. Um, I have to acknowledge, as usual, my camera and technical staff, Mike Gesme and, and Dick Mensing. Thank you so much. And we're really pleased to be here today with Shar Altoff, a longtime Cannon Falls resident with lots of history, and her daughter, Kathy Brecken, to help fill in some of the blanks in the story. Um, but I'd like to start, Shar, with just um, your recollection of your family of origin and, and maybe your history of how they originally came to this area. All right. Um, my mom and dad, uh, uh, my mom was from Red Wing. My dad was from Lake City. He was a, a veterinarian and lived in Cannon Falls, was practicing there. And um, uh, then Dr. Um, um, Conley, who went with my mom's sister, that's how dad and mom met each other. Okay. Uh, she introduced them. And so then they were married and moved to Cannon Falls also. And so that's where I was born, in, uh, was born here in Cannon in 1921. And um, I have one sister. And uh, um, I do remember, I remember winters in uh, Cannon Falls. Uh, one winter when the snow was so deep that dad had to uh, go ahead of us and make big steps so we could get through the the snow to get to uh, to get to school sure. but uh, we had it was a wonderful childhood dad always had to have horses dogs and so uh, whether we liked it or not we had to ride the horses every day to keep them um, exercised mom i remember as a little kid uh, near christmas time with a lot of snow uh, poppy Dr. Yeah. Alexander had, as mom said, horses and dogs, and he had a cutter yes, that he, he kept did. out at the fairgrounds. And I remember going out um, with this horse-drawn cutter wrapped in horsehair blankets in the back seat. Yep, I remember those. There was a fire at the, uh, he kept it at the uh, fairground, and there was a fire out there, and that, so the cutter was never saved, which was too bad, oh. because it was really a, a the, beautiful. Uh, priceless if there were pictures of that. Yeah, not, yes. Though. There, are, uh, there, there is, are some. there are some there pictures, are some. Okay. yeah, uh -huh. but uh, that, yeah, no, it, it was, it uh, was a wonderful, wonderful growing up. Well, let, let me just go back one step Certainly. further, because it sounds like your family was early Goodhue County residents. What, where did they come from initially, and what prompted them to come to this part of the world? Uh, my, um, uh, my mother's uh, mother and dad, one, uh, her uh, um, mother was Norwegian, and um, uh, Grandpa was um, Hungarian, mm -hmm. and um, they they met in Red Wing. Grandpa was a potter in uh, in Red Wing, and um, I, that's really all I know about them. But that's how they met in Red Wing, and they had just immigrated to the to Red Wing. Red Wing and pottery collectors and dealers oh. know his name well, mm -hmm. Emil Shatola, <laughs> because the Red Wing potters would make what they called lunch hour pieces pieces that were not for the regular manufacturer of the line, but they would do them on their own at lunch hours or coffee breaks or whatever. And so there was a big family auction in Red Wing at the family home, and um, several of the pieces had many dealers come to bid on because they knew they were Emil Chatola pieces wow. from the 1800s. And we, we have one of those that we bid on and kept, so that was very fun. Yeah, yeah with Grandpa's name on it, yes. which is mm -hmm. very special. Yeah, Chuck Drollmeter told me what we had. Well, he sure said, Chuck Kathy, you have to, he yeah. would know, <laughs> you have to buy that. So. And I don't know exactly when Red Wing Pottery began, but he must have been one of the early people there. He would have been, and, and I don't know the exact date either, Dick, but the, the big piece that I have with his name on uh, was dated in the 1890s. Wow. So um, he was, had been there a long time by then. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my, uh, my dad's dad, was a carpenter in Lake City. And just how they, they came over in the Mayflower. They did. I mean, that's been the subject of lots of uh, family talk lately because mom has a book, The Alexanders of Maine, and oh. it traces um, the Alexander family back to the Mayflower, literally. And, um, and we don't know 
when exactly or why they wound up in Lake City, Minnesota. Your grandfather um, was in um, the Civil War, yes. the 1st Minnesota Regiment at Gettysburg, because mm -hmm. we have all the letters that he wrote home to his family while oh. he was encamped at Gettysburg. Oh. But yeah. why they wound up in Lake City, we simply don't know. No, uh -huh. we don't, it, which is too bad. And he but obviously survived Gettysburg. He did. Which is he did. somewhat rare. And then traveled by ship to California, down around the tip of South America, really? and mm -hmm. headed to California for the gold rush, and um, or late gold rush, or whatever, yeah. because again, we have letters he wrote home um, from that part of his life. But there's so many pieces that are, are missing. Yeah. No, that's really but interesting it's a wonderful for all of us. Story. It is a wonderful story. Well, yeah. and, and I think it's interesting because uh, my grandpa Alexander, your dad, uh -huh. uh, who was the veterinarian here in town, had four sisters. He was the only boy, mm -hmm. so the family line kind of died out because he had two daughters, mm -hmm. yes. my mom and her sister Kathleen. But his four sisters, who were all rather interesting characters in their own right, all went to college. And we have photographs of the whole family dressed up for what you would expect from a carpenter family from Lake City, Minnesota in the 1800s. And we get, again, we don't know any more than that. Yeah. Um, but it was interesting. I think yeah. it's a wonderful story because even becoming a veterinarian in that era was not That's true. Common. No, it no, wasn't. One, of his, yeah. one mm -hmm. of his sisters was a hospital administrator and mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Another one uh, married a man who was a railroad builder and they wound up in Shanghai, China, where really? she raised her family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yes, so. it is. You know, I forget mm -hmm. all those things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so did your father went to veterinary school at the University of Minnesota then? No, it was uh, McKillop. It was a uh, veterinary school in Chicago, okay. and uh, it, it isn't in existence any longer, okay. but that's where Dad went. Yeah. And then so. did he come originally to set up practice in Cannon Falls? Uh, I, yes, I'm sure that that's uh, what he did. Uh -huh. And can yeah. you recall at all, I'm curious with a far background, what was veterinary work like in those days? It was much oh. different than today, I suspect. Yes, because it, uh, it was mostly a large animal yeah. uh, business is what it was. I mean, this was the day when he started before tractors and... He, I remember when the tractors started. I mean, it, uh, it, it was upsetting to Dad to have this kind of machinery come and take his, some of this business away. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, and I remember, of course, living through the Depression, he wasn't particularly busy either until a little bit later. He was before the Depression. And we had a, uh, um, our telephone was operated by um, women and one of the women, Mabel Westerson, lived with us for years. Mm -hmm. But when she was working, Dad would call her and tell her where he was going for the evening. So he could, she could let him know if, if he got a call. Okay. <laughs> Which I thought was always fun. I but, remember uh, the dogs. He always, always had, had dogs. dogs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mom remembers the horses because she had to ride them every day growing up. But I remember the dogs. Oh, there yeah. are more... In the family photos, I think there are more pictures of his beautiful dogs oh, yeah. than of his family. Really? Yeah. Yeah. No, he was. Uh, so he loved was animals. Your home in town? <laughs> we lived many places in Cannon Falls. Um, I can't. Um, I can't really tell you what streets they're on. Yeah. And uh, I was really in college before they built the home on the, the hill. Okay. I don't know where you know if you know where that is, okay. Dick. Yeah. Yeah, uh huh. And so I never really lived in that home very yeah. much. So, but uh, no, they finally and they finally built a home, which was really good, really good. Right. And they and, the, and they had a cabin on Lake Pepin. Yes, yeah. that was a family cabin on Lake Pepin sure. that we inherited and loved. Yeah. So. Well, you mentioned that it was prior to the age of tractors, or tractors were just coming in, but this has always been a dairy farming region as well, so I so he had his practice was dairy and horses. Yes, it was. And he traveled far and wide to do uh, I, in the During the Depression, too, Dad tested cattle. Mm -hmm. And I know this is how we got our vacations. He would go up into Mille Lacs County, for instance, and test the cattle in that county. And a lot of times in the summertime, I would keep books for him as he tested. Uh, and so I'd go with him, okay. and, uh, and which was always interesting. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> and tell us a little bit about the other side of the family. I've heard that Conway name certainly mm -hmm. it predates me, but I've certainly heard that in the history of Gannon Falls. So, yes. Um, well, um, Alva Conley, 
married mom's sister, and uh, they lived, oh, I love that home. We were all born in that home. I don't, it's, a, it's right across from the old greenhouse, mm -hmm. that big home. Oh, sure. was the Conley home okay. originally. Yes. And okay. uh, I know we played there. We were all born there, all of the cousins, it seems. And uh, it was a, a big part of our lives as we were growing up. And um, then uh, Uncle Alva died. Uh, I think um, Ruth, my cousin, and we were very close in age. I think she was in about the sixth grade, something like oh, that. My. And so then they uh, uh, they moved to Red Wing because that was uh, Aunt Grace's home. Okay. So they moved there, and uh, but they moved back. It's hard for me to remember all those things. But they did move back because I remember Ruth graduated uh, from Cannon, and uh, so they did stay so here Ruth's the rest of the So Ruth's dad was Dr. Alva Conley. Ruth's dad was <clears throat> Dr. And was Alva. Dr. Alva Conley the son of the, another Dr. Ca Conley in Cannon Falls, right? I thought they were cousins. Okay, I didn't The know dentist that. is, okay. I think, Dr. Okay. Lewis Conley. Okay. I think, I think they were cousins, but I'm not quite sure. I don't recall. And do we but think that, that Cannon Falls would have had one doctor at that time, probably, or might there have been more? I think there was, I, I'm not sure. Yeah. There was a Hiram Conley. You know, I, um, I'm really vague about uh, well, I, that. Well, I remember hearing that name as well. Yes. Of course, I should have studied, so I knew all these. But uh. well, I mean, I didn't think of that. I yeah. should have, too. Yeah. <laughs> but they're all, those cousins are all dead now, too. So yeah. it, uh, uh, well, I don't then, communicate. And then you continued the family tradition. Tell us about graduating from high school and going to college as well. Yes. Uh-huh. Um, I went to the University of Minnesota my first year and really didn't like it. So um, I finally talked my mom and dad into letting me go to St. Olaf and because I was interested in music. Yes. So, and then after that, but I didn't want to teach. So I did um, go to California to radio school. But you sang so, in the St. Olaf Choir. I sang in the St. Olaf Under Dr. F. Malleus Christensen. Right. And that's a pretty impressive that credential was. to have. Yes, uh, when I was a junior, it was his last uh, year, okay. and then uh, his son Olaf yes. came in. So the, the two of them directed my senior year. Yeah. So, no, it was really one of the joys of my life. Yes. was singing in that choir. Well, yeah. it's uh, absolutely still the highlight of the Saint Olaf Christmas concert when they do an F. Malleus arrangement of songs. Oh yes, so and they always do. Timeless. Yeah, they are. They, and they and mom are. at ninety-two still does not miss the Saint Olaf Christmas festival. No, we go yeah, every we year. Go, yeah, we do. We go every year, which is wonderful. So did, did you end up with a music major then? Sure. I did, yeah. in education. In education. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. When, but when I graduated, I didn't want to teach. So that's why I went to radio school in California and did something different. And uh, I worked in um, Oakland for a while and then in Salt Lake City, then in Chicago, and then uh, um, I came home and uh, Ken and I became engaged. We didn't. We never went together, although he also went to a school in yes. in Canon too. So, yeah. but we uh, really didn't. Um, we were platonic friends, and then we were romantic. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So we were married in uh, 1946. Mom, in didn't Cannon. Dad work his way through college playing trombone in a band? Oh yes. In a dance uh, yes, band. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. No, he loved playing trombone. And, and where did Ken go to college? Uh, well, after he, oh dear, after he graduated from high school, uh, he was going to be in the Missouri Synod, and uh, so he, there was a Concordia, it was a high school and a junior college, so he went there for a year or two, I can't remember, and then decided that wasn't for him. Mm -hmm. So then he went to the university okay. and uh, graduated from there, but then he uh, was going to be a pastor at um, ELCA and their seminary was the Luther Seminary in St. Paul. Sure. And the president of that seminary thought he should, because of his background, should go to St. Olaf one year oh. before he went into the seminary. Oh. So he did. It was that year after I had graduated that he was yeah. there. Yeah, so then he, then he went to the seminary. I didn't know that. Huh. Oh, isn't it interesting, yeah. all the things I mean, that I come up. I knew he went to St. Olaf <coughs> for a year, but I didn't realize yeah. it was after well, he had already yeah. graduated. Yes, so. it was, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so then, uh, of course, we, then um, his internship was in Detroit, and that was a wonderful year. 
uh, and we were there longer even than uh, six months, I think, which was usually the extent of an internship, the length of an in internship. But, um, oh, I can't remember their names. Uh, the pastor and his wife wanted to take a trip to Norway. So they did, and Ken and I spent the okay. whole summer there too. So, no, it was a wonderful experience. Yes. Yeah, we really liked it. And then we came home, and he was, um, uh, he had, uh, had a church call to Pine River in northern Minnesota, okay, yes. northern, yes. Uh, uh, north of Brainerd. Yes. So we were there four years. Uh, both Bill and Kathleen were uh, born yes. there. Okay. And then uh, he had a call to Dawson, which was really a large congregation. So we did go there. And then um, there were two big e ELCA churches in Dawson. And the other pastor, young pastor, lived across the street from us. They were such good friends of ours. We just really had such a great time. But then uh, Ken um, was diagnosed with uh, multiple scler sclerosis. And so uh, he was told to leave the ministry. He was actually told to leave? The yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. It, it was a neurological um, problem, I think, uh, as, as I say. It's, and so that's why they just thought it was too hard on his okay. nerves. So, so that's when you came back to Then Canon we came back to Canon, uh-huh. And um, with three little kids and no yeah, jobs. Jean was born just <clears throat> before we left Dawson. Um, yes, no, um, we, no job. But he worked at the hardware store, and then he decided um, uh, that he would go into the wholesale religious good uh, goods and sell religious goods all over the world. Anyway, our house was loaded. He, he wrote thousands of letters to uh, chambers of commerce all over the world, cities. And they'd send us their, what they had. And so we had these uh, all over the house boxes of stuff. And uh, This would not be mom's kind of thing. You have <laughs> boxes of stuff everywhere? No, that's true. Oh, I did, I did teach uh, music in Pine River when we were there, okay. too. I did for, uh, for a couple of years part-time. And then um, I did in Canon also. I had to go back, I, or I went back. I didn't like that word, had. I went, teach, I taught in Canon and music. As a choral for, Right. Director, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and elementary too. Okay. So. Uh, so I did that for three years while we were getting on his feet. And then he, it was a salesman that had come to the house one day and saw all of this stuff that we had and uh, suggested that Ken open a gift shop. And so that's when the Seven Seas shop uh, was built. And that's how we got rid of our uh, boxes in the house. And uh, then um, as it developed, it was a religious wholesale uh, for quite a while. And I can't remember when we sort of disbanded the, whole, uh, the religious and went into all kinds of... That was uh, likely the blame of the next generation. Because probably. probably. Do you? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, but I remember the, some of the things that Ken would get from uh, different countries. I, do you remember the bookends? The oh, whole yes. family had to... Um, I spent two summers painting bookends, the various colors for the five seasons of the church year. And my mother did, and oh, we had the whole Fortunately, family. Fortunately, there that. weren't the same child labor laws then. No, because that's true. we all had to work every, every summer. Well, as any, any startup business takes a leap of faith. Absolutely. I mean, this one, is, to me, is fascinating because well, was it, did it start as a hobby or did he have a marketing plan of how this he had, He had a marketing plan because this was when we came to, and how long he had thought about this, I have no idea. And I he really had a catalog think. from uh, very yeah. early on. So Midwest Importers was the wholesale part of the company and where he sold things like brass crosses and... A lot of praying hands things and oh, so yes, forth. Right. And then he had the little retail shop, the Seven C shop, which is now the Animal Health Center. Right. Dr. Right. Mike's um, business. And, um, and then the Midwest part of it, the wholesale part, um, kept getting larger. And that's how he started uh, having Christmas products because of the religious connection. And many of his Christmas products came from East Germany, the um, 
uh, GDR at the time, or the DDR, because there was the right. DDR uh -huh. and the GDR, and that was a fascinating part of the history it was. of Midwest. I do remember spending one summer sanding off on the bottom of the, items where it said came from right. East German, yes. communist-controlled um, Germany, and so he had relationships with strong relationships with factory owners in East Germany, and it was very difficult to do business there because of the Communist Party. And he went to Leipzig several times because they had, that's where they had their fair. Okay. And uh, I got to go with him once too. And I remember going through the border. Um, they would put m mirrors under the car to see that we weren't taking anything in that we shouldn't. And uh, I know they asked about my, our reading material. And I, I did have some books, of course, that I read. Uh, we had to read a lot. I had a lot of spare time. Sure. And so, um, but they were, they really uh, uh, questioned us. And, but it was, it was very interesting. Yeah. And Leipzig was such a sad city at that time. It was really, really sad. Many of the East German factory owners who made things like nutcrackers and Christmas ornaments and advent pieces would later on travel here. They would allow them to travel, but they always had to be accompanied by a party member. And I re oh yes, and I remember one particular trip. Um, Dad picked them up at the airport, the two factory owners, who he got to know very well, and the party, there were two party members, and they at, the party members asked if they could go to a big American supermarket, because they'd heard about them and um, didn't believe it. And so Dad took them to the first buyer lease in St. Mm -hmm. Louis Park, <laughs> yes. and they bought a bunch of bananas, and they got back in the car, and they said, had we not seen it with our own eyes, we never would have believed it. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it was very inter it interesting truly was. trips. Yes. And well, usually dad would hear from the FBI before and after mm -hmm. a trip from the people from East Germany to know if he'd heard anything or whatever. But dad was all about Christmas ornaments and not about espionage. So. <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> I suspect there were other people in that type of a business, but it sounds so unique. I mean, you think it there was. were other competitors early on that were doing somewhat the same thing and then not really early on, I don't think. And Not I'm as thinking. much. Dad was able to uh, establish a particular niche fairly early, and it was with these people from East Germany in, an, in a mountainous area called the Erzgeberge. Mm -hmm. And that dad really had a true passion for that type of product, and mostly what they did was Christmas product. Okay. And so that really was the niche for Midwest for many, many years. I think it helped. He was German. He could speak German. Okay. And that made a difference, too. Yes. But we did have a uh, man, Heinz Paternoster, who was our uh, representative in Germany. And he, um, oh, he spent many weeks and days with us. And he was just a wonderful gentleman. He became a very close family friend and yes. he worked with dad until he died and Heinz's English was as good as and any of ours. Yeah. He was a captain in Hitler's army oh. and was captured near the end of the war and was a prisoner of war in the U.S. First in Arkansas where he and others almost died. They were treated so poorly and then they traveled by train to Utah where they were treated very Idaho. well. Sorry. Idaho. Um, Idaho. Pardon? Idaho. I'm sorry, thank you, That's Idaho, okay. where they were treated very well. And Heinz said they were so indoctrinated in the um, Nazi system that he truly didn't believe that Germany could lose the war till they traveled by train at night through the U.S. and, of mm -hmm. course, had no idea what an enormous country it was. And mm -hmm. he said, I realized then that Germany could never win this war. So he was a, just a wonderful man. He was a man. wonderful character. And yeah. represented yeah. Midwest, yeah. yeah. And we spent many times, I spent many hours at, or many days with Renata, his wife, in, uh, they lived in Augsburg, Germany, mm -hmm. while Heinz and Ken took the trip to Leipzig, sure, too. Okay. So, yeah, you know, it was wonderful. <laughs> so that was the source of a lot of the products. It was. What, what, was, what was the marketing plan? How did, they get, how did they get marketed or sold to the next level then? At first, Dad had this catalog, and he had a showroom in Minneapolis. And so the original expansion was purely geographic in nature. And Chuck and Eva Drometer worked for Dad for years. And every summer, the two of them would pack up their car with samples 
and go on the road mm -hmm. to find shops, either general little gift shops or Christian bookstores or whatever, to buy the Christmas products and the religious products that Midwest sold. Um, later, um, there were more showrooms, more salespeople, and again, strong geographic expansion. But the issue then became the, first of all, the wall came down, which was oh, wonderful. Oh, that was wonderful. Um, yeah. But then not easy for the people in the old um, east part of Germany to survive anymore doing what they did. Um, and the product had become so expensive that it wasn't as marketable to American consumers. The mm. products simply cost too much. And so that meant that for the company to survive, product had to be produced elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And that was about the time that my brother Bill and my husband Dan and I were involved in the business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we, um, we traveled to Asia quite a few times. We, Ken and Dan and uh, Bill and so. And when, and when did that, with the more Asian um, I would say that started in the 80s. In the 80s, mm -hmm. okay. Um, and that changed the company dramatically and quickly. And once we started to buy in Asia, we realized that we couldn't continue with our niche and be successful and grow if we carried the product that everyone else could have or designed by people in Asia who n knew nothing about how Americans, let's say, celebrated Christmas. So quite early on in the 80s, we started to have product designed. And I remember Lynn Gates was our fo first full-time product designer. She was from Portland, Oregon and moved here. And, um, and the, that part of the company quickly expanded to the point where we designed the vast majority of everything that we sold. So at one time we had 18 full-time designers here in Cannon Falls and then would work with factories all over in Taiwan, Japan, China, Philippines, India, etc. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's obviously when you were very involved. In very. It. But I mean, that became a, a monumental task just to get through um, import, red tape, all kinds of issues like that, I suspect. Well, one of the fun parts of the, I mean, it was a very fun business. And one of the fun, fun parts was we always described it as such a schizophrenic business because on the one hand, we were very international. On the other hand, we were very small town. And I always remember we'd have um, bankers and various people coming and they'd walk by the desks of maybe a local Cannon Falls person who had worked at Midwest for 15 or 20 years and would look down and realize that this high school educated homegrown Cannon Falls person was hedging currency and um, they were always very very surprised by things like that and so we when we looked for designers we always it was a national search um, but many of our employees were from here and many had a chance to finish college or get more education uh, as a result of that I many employees flew uh, in a plane for the first time in their lives um, because of their jobs at sure. Midwest mm -hmm. because we were very international we'd hire someone and say we we need you in Manila next month which was sort of ooh, um, <laughs> that kind of a thought to a, a lot of people but that was just Tons of fun, tons yeah. of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. It was a great business. And it started out with uh, a handful of employees. You probably remember who some of those were, and some are some of those still alive, probably. Oh, sure, Bill it Ekstrom. Was, Bill Ekstrom, sure. Bill was one Ekstrom. of the first employees. Well, I remember Walter. Um, oh, uh, sure, uh, Shirley Callister's father. Dad, Walter was Saunders. Walter Saunders oh, okay. oh. worked for uh, worked for us for a long time. And, and Chuck and, and, and uh, Gene Hawks worked yes. too uh, yes. from the from the beginning. My, no, it was my very first small. trip to Chicago when I was twelve oh, years old. Oh, that's right. Um, Mom and Dad were going to a trade show, and um, I went along for whatever reason. And I shared a room with Gene in Chicago because she and I both still laugh about arguing. Uh, about the radio because I wanted WLS yeah, Chicago, you remember, <laughs> on the radio and she just didn't want any of that kind of funny business at all. So um, Jean was with the company a long time and Jean worked at Seven C Shop because I remember when you and Dad went to Europe for almost two months. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Given Dad's diagnosis of, well, I'm squirming now, of, of MS, they didn't think he'd live that long. So they cashed in his life insurance policies, and they took this fabulous trip 
to Europe with their friends, the Permans from Northfield, leaving their three children with my mom's parents. She told me last year that she always was afraid that when we were raising our boys, that we'd want them to return the favor um, <laughs> for the, the two month stint. But we didn't. But they didn't. And they took this fa fabulous, fabulous trip. Yeah, it was and wonderful. Jean Hawks with, and Hazel Banks made yes. coffee and cookies for the night we picked you up at oh. the airport when you flew home. It was a very <laughs> oh, big deal. Yeah, that was the Seven C Shop days. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Right, very yeah. Big deal. Oh, goodness, your kids still turned out okay, even they, though you were gone. Even though we were gone, there were a few yes. Problems, but <laughs> you're welcome to that. <laughs> uh, uh, no, we were fortunate. <laughs> so, oh, it was. Well, it was a wonderful life. To, not to say that Midwest was wonderful for Cannon Falls, for, you know, for lots of people's jobs, but beyond that, for your benevolence oh, for, to the community uh, as well. And oh, maybe, maybe you could talk a little bit about some of those things you, you and Ken were involved in over the years. I know. There were well, lots it, of projects that you were involved in, and Kathy and Dennis have continued those. Okay. Yes, well, to begin with, I know uh, the big project that Ken was interested in, Bob O'Gorman, and was uh, the hospital. Yes. And so that was really, took so much of their time to begin with, and uh, I wish they were all there to see our new hospital yeah. today. It's really terrific. But, um, no, Ken was, um, uh, he loved working for the community and doing things in the community. And uh, in the church, he used to uh, um, substitute in a lot of parishes, too, when the ministers were on vacation. He did that quite a bit. And um, uh, I can't, I can't, can you help me? I mean, I think it, Sunday mornings were all, oh, yeah. all about church. Yeah, um, it was. Two services, the, you were both in the choir, and the choir sang at both services. And so every Sunday morning from 9 to 12, that's where... We were, but I, I remember as a little kid that the hospital and establishing a hospital in this town and a nursing home, that was a huge project for Dad. Yeah, I, it was. Countless it's nights where the line at home was, he's at, he's at a hospital meeting, he's yeah. at a hospital <laughs> meeting, and he'd talk about the people through the years. What was her name? A, um, the hospital administrator who was Oh, my. I mean, he, oh, she he was had many awful. stories, but yes. he... Um, he and Bob were very involved and mm -hmm. determined and Don Mensing, that we and Don too. Mensing yeah. determined yeah. that we have a hospital in this little town. Yeah. yeah, no, it was it was a big deal for them, yeah, and absolutely. they really worked hard. Yeah. yeah, and it's been a big deal for all of us. And that building yeah. is now, I think, fifty-four years old. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. No, yes. it's uh, I've seen no. better days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. no, we were no, we really had a wonderful life in Cannon Falls and Midwest and. And I don't, I certainly don't know the whole medical history, but I knew Ken later in life, and he was a very energetic guy. Absolutely. The, the original I diagnosis, obviously, was... I thought it was a wrong diagnosis, okay. really. But I think it would be interesting, if it hadn't been, not been diagnosed, how our lives would, would have, have gone. Very different. Yeah, they truly would have. So, so often they were. Sure, he would yeah. have been mm -hmm. a Lutheran pastor till yeah, he retired. That's right. In all yeah, likelihood. yeah I think so too. Mm -hmm. So, but he he truly had an entrepreneurial yeah. spirit yeah, within did. those pastors' mm -hmm. bones. Yeah. he really did. He loved what he did. Well, he was always, always. a salesman. He was yeah, the ultimate, ultimate salesman. salesman. I always yeah. laugh at Paul Jacobson, who's worked <laughs> there forever. And one year at a sales conference, and Paul probably owned 30 Nutcrackers already, and he heard her dad give a presentation, and he walked out and shook his head and said, you know, I'd buy another one now. You know, all I've got to do is listen to him. But throughout his life, the product that he loved was the product that he started with, yeah, the German means, product that yeah. was made by hand in the old East German part of the world. He loved that product. Yeah. <laughs> you could tell he was passionate about it. Passionate yeah, and passionate was. about <laughs> yeah. the Christmas yeah, connection. He was, that. Yeah. Yes, he was. But he, you know, he was an entrepreneur who adjusted very well to the changes of the company and encouraged the growth and encouraged a younger generation to take it in somewhat of a different direction. And he was always on board for all of that. Yeah. He was, yeah. No, he talks no. about the, the first year when he had Midwest and the Seven C shop, and he had to go to see D. Fay Case because he needed to borrow money for the first time. And D. Fay, of course, had his cigar, you know, hanging out of his mouth. His dad was talking to him, and um, and Dad apologized and said it will never happen again. And D. Fay said, "Yes, it will every year from now on." <laughs> and D. Fay, of course, was right. And some of the fun 
uh, memorabilia we have from dad is when I go back, I have his sh sheet from each year. He was, he was truly a financial kind of guy. He would write down exactly what he paid for oh. everything, mm -hmm. what the expenses were, and we still have all of that yeah, in, we do. in notebooks where dad would lay out the year and, and see how mm -hmm. it went because he kept a, a firm handle on things. And Linda Cullen, who was his secretary and later mine for many years, would always keep things in a notebook. And she would always write down what she referred to as Kenisms. And um, all of us still repeat some of those occasionally. And I remember one of his big ones was um, never underestimate the buying power of the American public nor overestimate their taste. That was a good one. Yeah. Um, yep. <laughs> That is so, a good one. Yes, so Dad had a million of them, yeah. and he loved the business he started. He yeah, really he did. Truly did. Yeah. And some of those stories from that era seems so much more interesting than the ones today. I mean, we, we are so governed by what we have to do today. But, That's uh, true. Yeah. I know what my dad would tell that same story about coming back from World War II on Thanksgiving Day, 1945, and going to Art Scriber and saying, I need money to start again. Right. That's well, right. the bank's closed, but here's some out of my pocket. Right. So. Yeah. Isn't right. that something? Yeah. Uh, it was a different it era. It truly was. And it I truly remember the, some of the things my dad was willing to do for his business and, and to support his family. Um, I remember when he went to China, um, uh, mainland, yeah. or was referred to it then, Red China, yeah. the first <laughs> few times to buy product. And there was only one hotel in the city that had this trade show um, that was had western plumbing and would accom accommodate foreigners and so he stayed there and you not only didn't have a room on your own you were assigned to room with a stranger and they tried to match it up so that you spoke the same language but not always and you know this was a hotel with lots of rats I remember Bill going later, many years later, <laughs> staying at the same hotel when you could get your own room, and sitting with Liev Hustvet from Northfield, who yeah. became our first um, uh, uh, expat yeah. living over there. And they were having a late lunch in the Dung Fong Hotel, and Bill caught movement out of the corner of his eye and finally said to Liev, Liev, those are rats running all over the hotel. And Liev said, uh-huh. So they called over the waitress, and her response was, well, if you don't like rats, please don't come into the kitchen. And um, oh. And all of the Midwest folks who traveled had um, unbelievable travel stories, and we referred to it as the giftware wars, what we would do for Christmas ornaments. Um, but it all started with Dad, who was willing to do whatever it took. Yeah. Well, I remember the hurricane when you were in uh, Taipei. Oh, the Weren't earthquake. You? Earthquake. Yeah. That, that oh, was, yes, that scared I me. Mean, it was a, it was month a major. before Alex got married, and I remember. Mm -hmm hanging on to my bed in my room thinking, what were the odds I'd die in an earthquake a month before mm. Alex's wedding as furniture in my oh. hotel room was flying across the room. Yeah, we had a lot of exciting times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that yeah. is truly remarkable to be in East Germany during that It truly era. is. And then in China. And then in China. Yeah. In China. Must have been yep. some of the first Westerners in China. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And no, because I got to go once, too, to, and had one of those with the light, in the, oh, of course, that was Leipzig, too, with a, you, one light in the room that you'd pull on the train. Uh, sure. yeah. <laughs> no, those are yeah. really interesting times. Yes, yeah, sure. really were. Yeah. So, I think I, one of the interesting things, given the product that we sold, you would think in our family that mom would have been the one who loved the product and dad the businessman if we were to be very traditional about it. But that wasn't true. Dad was the one who loved the product, and Mom was a true sport. Every year in the busy season, she was out there with her heavy shoes on packing uh, Christmas shipments to send to retailers all over the country. One year, we spent the entire Thanksgiving holiday unpacking containers of teddy bears from China because they were late arriving and had to go out. So all the Midwest employees and all of us were Family. involved, and Mom as well. But to the end, the one who really loved the product, I think of all the Christmas gifts the three of us kids received through mm -hmm. the years. Mm -hmm. Most of the Christmas shopping was done by Dad oh, yes. and mm -hmm. of the type of thing he loved. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah. And that would defy many stereotypes, that's for sure. It yeah. would defy it would. many it's stereotypes. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I think we've covered yeah. it. No, okay. your, Very your well. Your dad was a great person, but it, uh, you are as well, Sharon. We sure really appreciate the, thank you. The, your time. Yeah, wow. Thank you very much, Dick.